from Brisbane, 7 News with Kendall Gilding. Good afternoon. Our top stories this Friday. Federal raids. Australia's spy agency investigates a politician for alleged close links to China. New owner Virgin Australia's takeover announced and the company reveals its plans for the airline's Queensland headquarters. Coroner's ruling, an inquest into a deadly North Queensland cafe explosion, finds the driver responsible shouldn't have been behind the wheel. And sporting celebrations, Australia wins the right to host the Women's World Cup with Brisbane set to play a role. First at four, a state-run COVID task force will ramp up compliance checks to prevent a second wave of coronavirus sweeping across Queensland. The operation, ordered by the Attorney General and prompted by Victoria's outbreak, will see officers canvas homes and businesses. Tom Hartley reports. It's clear to see what happens when you drop the ball. Those are the words of Police Minister Mark Ryan taking aim at Victoria and urging Queenslanders to be compliant, not complacent. Please don't undo the good work that we have done. There are plenty of examples around the world where people have dropped the ball. We're not dropping the ball here in Queensland. Today there's one new case in Queensland, the first in nine days, understood to be an Australian soldier who was working in Papua New Guinea before flying home to Brisbane. Well, the situation in Victoria, meanwhile, continues to worsen with another spike. 30 new cases identified overnight, a double-digit increase for the 10th consecutive day. And that's why the Attorney-General says the almost 3,000 Queenslanders who are in quarantine, be that at home or in a hotel, mustn't flout the rules. There's a whole task force um, put together around how we do the compliance checking. They will continue to use the very effective methodology they have been using, but what we will do is ramp that up and we'll be um, checking to see those people that are being compliant. We're told the focus of this crackdown will be on backpackers and farm workers in the Wide Bay and Burnett regions. There'll also be more random checks across the state on licensed venues and places where people gather, pubs, clubs, restaurants, marketplaces and the like. 2,111 infringement notices have been issued to Queenslanders to date. I'll have more on this enforcement operation and the latest developments in the News at Six. A Sydney politician is embroiled in a major investigation into alleged links to Chinese espionage, one of the most significant cases in ASIO history. The Labor Party has been rocked by the developments. Olivia Leeming has the story. The Prime Minister says today's events show Australia will not tolerate foreign interference in a veiled warning to Beijing. After Australian Federal Police officers searched Mr Mosselman's home for evidence, joined by a forensic team combing three vehicles parked outside as part of this joint investigation between the AFP and ASIO into suspected interference by the Chinese government in our political system. The Upper House MP refusing to comment as he left. Detectives also attending his office at the New South Wales Parliament. No charges have yet been laid. The Prime Minister says the allegations are being taken seriously. We won't cop anyone coming and seeking to interfere in our political system, uh, in our energy sector, uh, in any area of um, perceived um, area of opportunity. For an outside actor. In a statement, ASIO has emphasised the raids do not relate to any specific threat to the community. Mr Mosselman has been a controversial supporter of China, forced to stand down as Assistant President of the New South Wales Legislative Council over his pro-China stance, taking nine trips to the country since 2009, with the Chinese government covering some of his costs. On one trip, criticising Australia's tough foreign interference laws. He's also called for a new world order and repeatedly praised President Xi Jinping's handling of coronavirus. Here he is in February. Can I just say that the Chinese government should be commended for the immediate action that it took because it was contained so much in, in China. Um, that meant that the rest of the world had not been affected. Uh, as it would have if those measures were not taken. Earlier this year, the head of ASIO, Mike Burgess, warned the agency was prepared to name and shame foreign actors if they're exposed as interfering in our political system. The investigation may take some weeks to complete, creating further headaches for Labor, already under pressure over the Victorian branch stacking scandal. Though no word today from the federal opposition leader, Anthony Albanese. His office maintains this is a state issue. 
Qantas Chief Executive Alan Joyce says he's had constructive dialogue with the Prime Minister as calls grow for JobKeeper to be extended to help the struggling aviation sector. 15,000 staff remain stood down, 6,000 positions will be made redundant. Mr Joyce says the tough decision proves certainty, provides certainty. They'll get that money and they can go on and find jobs. That's a lot better than standing them down for years with no prospect of, the, of those jobs coming back. We have to be honest and the union should be thanking us for doing the right thing by the people. Mr Joyce says because of Qantas's position, they haven't needed to cut as many jobs as other major airlines. Meantime, Virgin Australia has a new owner. American private equity group Bain Capital has agreed to become the operator, committing to retain as many jobs as possible and keep its Queensland headquarters. Cyrus Capital Partners, which has links to billionaire Sir Richard Branson, withdrew from the bidding war. We'll have more on the takeover in the news at six. A coronial inquest has found the driver who triggered a deadly cafe blast in far north Queensland got behind the wheel despite being unfit to hold a licence. The daughter of one of the victims has remembered her mother today as pure sunshine. Georgia Terry has the story. It's been five years since Brian Scott drove into the Serves You Right Cafe in Raven's Ho. 21 people were injured and two killed. One of them, 82-year-old Margaret Clark. She opened up the room as soon as she walked into the house. We all loved her and wherever she went, she always made new friends. Today, a far northern coroner found Mr Scott was medically unfit to hold a licence due to a history of suffering seizures. Nerida Wilson also said the 60-year-old repeatedly ignored medical instructions not to drive. We knew that all the time because I followed everything up through newspapers and everything else and I always knew that he should not have been driving. Ms Wilson found Mr Scott's GP, Dr Ken Connolly, was aware that he suffered episodes and did not fulfil his professional duty to notify the Department of Transport. She has also recommended a task force be established to better educate doctors and GPs on how to report medical conditions to the Department of Transport and Main Roads. But Margaret Clark's daughter says she will never find closure and never forget June 9, 2015. Police believe one man could be linked to three assaults on women on Brisbane's north side. The offender is on the run, leaving Tagum residents fearing for their safety. Isabel Mullen reports. Well, Tagum residents who live here behind Cabbage Tree Creek have told 7 News they're too scared to leave their homes and go walking at night. All three women we spoke to avoid walking along the river for fear of being approached by strangers. I'm absolutely terrified. Mm. Really, really scared, yeah. I stopped walking at one stage because I was scared. They're calling for greater police patrols and streetlights as police investigate a series of incidents involving a man behaving inappropriately in Brisbane's north. The man is believed to look like this. He reportedly grabbed one woman on June 13 who'd been exercising along the Cabbage Tree Creek walking tracks. It's OK during the day, but definitely not at night. Um, I would not do it on my own because there's no lights or anything so you can't see anyone even if they walk straight past you pitch black. A man also exposed himself to a woman on the Cabbage Tree Creek bike path on June 21. The latest incident took place on June 24. A woman followed by a man on Rowan Road, Castledine, between Dorval Road and Cowie Road. I feel safe from the bus stop but in here I run. <laughs> I'm, I don't feel safe from the bridge to here. Police suspect the three incidents could be linked. Tonight at six, I'll have the full report. The ringleader behind a destructive school fire on the Gold Coast four years ago has been sent to jail. Paul Hamstra pleaded guilty to lighting the blaze at St Andrews Lutheran College on Anzac Day in 2016 and another fire at a playground five days earlier. He's been on bail since, being charged two years ago, but today a judge labelled his actions as serious, calculated and reckless. She sentenced him to three years jail. He'll be released after serving six months. For the first time, Australia will host a major soccer tournament with the Women's World Cup coming to Australia and New Zealand in 2023. Organisers say venues across Australia, including Brisbane, will deliver a tournament to remember. Katrina Blowers has the story. 
Good afternoon. Well, this is being called one of the greatest triumphs for football in the region. Queensland picked as part of a bid by Australia and New Zealand to host the 2023 Women's World Cup. In the early hours of this morning, an 18-second announcement that changed everything. Which will be Australia. Yeah! Suncorp Stadium selected as part of the venues around Australia that will host the Games in a move that will bring much needed tourism dollars to the Queensland sector hit hard by COVID. Right here at Suncorp Stadium, we're hoping to host the semi-final, one of nine games that will be played here in Queensland. Huge day for women's sport, huge day for football in this country and it can't be understated how exceptional it is to see the collaboration between New Zealand and Australia. And in Seven News tonight at six, I'll bring you more from Queensland's Tourism Minister on why this particular announcement will really bolster Queensland's bid to host a 2032 Olympic Games. Let's get a check of today's weather now. Paul Burt is enjoying another stunning Queensland winter oh. afternoon. Yes, it's, it's feeling that way, Kendall, but as soon as that big Golden Globe goes behind those Western Ranges, gee, it certainly cools down rather quickly. Good afternoon to everybody. Hope you're being safe and, of course, well. Uh, not a bad start to the day. Some shelf cloud about early this morning off the Goldie moving through. Have a look at the beaches because it was a very chilly start to the day, but still the surfers were out. Now, we are expecting a very good increase over the next several hours due to that low in the Tasman and also a stiff southeasterly breeze will continue to keep those waves pushing in over the next 72 hours. So the weekend's looking absolutely brilliant for the points. It'll be chest high coming in from 125 degrees, meaning southeast. So those, all, all those northern beaches are a little bit too exposed, unfortunately. What a temp, 21 degrees. Now, today's temperatures are uh, around 21 degrees across most coastal regions, uh, 22 on the Gold Coast. Single digits all last night everywhere except for in the city where it was 10 degrees with a top of 23 being the warmest. I'll see you soon again, Kendall, with more weather. Catch up with you then. Thanks, Bertie. Still to come on Seven's Afternoon News, the heartbroken mother of the nurse murdered in central Queensland thanks the community for helping her family. A renewed safety message in the US as the number of coronavirus cases continues to climb. And eager fans head back to a Gold Coast theme park as it reopens its doors. On 7 News, the Chinese spy scandal rocking Australian politics. Virgin's new owner, what it means for points and flights. No mortgage for a year. How to cash in on new home deals. Menus on your mobile, big changes to dining out. And the latest twist in the great buried cash mystery. 7 News at 6. For the first time in its 350-year history, the hotel has agreed to open its doors to cameras. The most exclusive tour. It's like living in downtown Abbey. See where the newest royal stayed before that big day. Meghan Walker was hit. The extraordinary Clifton Hotel, tonight on 7-2. Join AHM Hospital and Extras Direct and you'll get six weeks free. Plus, we'll waive any two and six month waits on extras. Yay! Whether you're a single, a couple, or a family. It's that simple. Uh, that doesn't look very simple. Offer ends June 30. Find out more and join AHM Direct today. AHM, the simple bit. If you buy a Titan Garage Shed this month, you'll get two free automatic door openers. What a cracker deal and worth 660 bucks. Buy a double garage, double in a workshop or an Oz barn and get two free automatic door openers. Thanks, Titan. It's for this month only, so don't muck around. And remember, Titan can take care of your council requirements and deliver to your door. You'll be lucky you got a Titan. I'm lucky. Call 13 27 36 for the Titan Display Centre near you. Lucky. The power's in your hands and at your feet. The BMW 320i sedan from 69900 Drive Away. Joy is coming. Glen 20 isn't just for the bathroom. It also kills 99.9% .9 of germs and viruses such as athlete's foot fungus, salmonella and the common cold virus. Glen 20. One spray, 101 uses.
Keep things light and airy with delicious Smith's Poppables. <laughs> Thanks for sharing, finally. One pop and you're in love. Want to sell something for instant cash? We're open. Looking to buy from a huge range of quality second-hand goods for less? We're open. Cash Converters. Find us online or visit us in-store. Julia, how was your vacation? Oh, you've, uh, you've, you've had a, um... Yes, I've had an epic reminder done for Aldi Special Buys. Turn your face into an epic reminder for this Saturday and get work boots for $34.99, a high-vis jacket for $39.99 and a wet-dry vacuum for $69.99. Only at Aldi. Good. Different. Beat the cold at Harvey Norman with the best in heating and air treatment solutions. Stay warm this winter with our range of ceramic, radiant and fan heaters. Convection, column and paddle heaters. The latest in gas and electric flame effect models. Heated throws and electric blankets plus a huge range of reverse cycle air conditioners. Treat the air quality in your home with everything from air purifiers to humidifiers. Harvey Norman has all the big brands at great prices. Visit us in store or online. Harvey Norman, your heating and air treatment specialist. Go! Relatives of murdered mother Karen Gilliland have thanked first responders, neighbours and the Rockhampton community for the support given to the family after her death. The 42-year-old nurse was killed in her home in front of two of her three children. The police support has been incredible. The three kids are with us now and they are our only focus and priority. Thank you. Karen's estranged husband, Nigel, has been charged with her murder. Face masks have become a big issue in the United States after some authorities ordered the public to wear them. New data estimates masks have prevented almost half a million COVID-19 cases in the country and could save thousands of lives. Paul Kadak has more. Across the United States, wearing a face mask is dividing. This is a planned demic. This is totally political and you know it. After Washington's governor ordered everyone to wear a mask, a local sheriff had different advice. Don't be a sheep. In Arizona, where cases are exploding, a city councillor mocked a mask order. I can't breathe! I can't breathe! He later apologised, insisting he wasn't trying to echo the words of George Floyd. The backlash comes despite data showing a mask can make a big difference. The University of Washington now projects the US death toll will climb from 120,000 today to 180,000 by October, but requiring masks could save 33,000 lives. If we don't have widespread mask use as we head into the fall and cases are going up, we're going to end up shutting down the economy to save lives. So far, many states that have required masks have seen COVID cases drop, as states that only recommend masks have seen cases increase. While the president's top experts have urged the public to go along... Make sure you wear a mask. Donald Trump has only been seen wearing a mask once. Some argue ordering people to wear them goes too far. I think coronavirus is real, but it, so is the flu, so is a lot of different viruses, and we just got to live our life and take precaution where necessary, but we got to keep going. Others say it's a civic duty. I'm wearing a mask to protect everyone, protect myself, protect our community. If you're not wearing your mask, you're just thinking about yourself. In the United States, Paul Kadak, 7 News. There's promising signs for tourism on the Gold Coast, with SeaWorld, the first major theme park, to reopen. Hundreds of happy customers arrived early and were welcomed back in with an applause. Crystal Etherington was there. It's an exciting day for staff and guests here at SeaWorld on the Gold Coast with the gates officially open after three months of being closed. Around 2,000 employees made a grand entrance back into the park <laughs> before the gates opened at 9.30am. It's going to be fun here because it's SeaWorld. The Kay family were the first in. 
That was the first to know for everything. <laughs> we know how busy this place can, can get in the, yeah. on the best of days. Sight, yes. <laughs> Haven't been here since probably I was a teenager. Inside, the experience is different. There'll be no queues on the attractions. Not having to wait in lines forever like we used to. <laughs> Pretty excited. Instead, guests used a phone app to book in a ride time. Easy, because you've always got your phone on you. At the shows, the crowd numbers were halved. The stadium marked to space families out. And over at Polar Bear Shores, Mishka put on quite the show to welcome everyone back. So nice to see them playing. SeaWorld will operate at 50% capacity with a maximum of about 6,000 people until September. We do uh, expect and we do probably need about 30% 30-40% capacity. Other big theme parks, Wet n Wild and Movie World are due to open on July 15. Just ahead, they're being called the Covidiots, the people flouting social distancing rules by heading to the beach in large numbers. The terrifying moment a plane comes into land then crashes and Australia's new marsupial discovery identified by a forgotten fossil. Four hundred and eighty-eight thousand buried in a suburban backyard. The most bizarre money pit discovery and how this squatter holds all the cards in the race to claim it. The new twist, who owns the buried half a million dollars on 7 News, 6 o'clock. While everybody else was aging, I was getting younger. The Academy Award winning masterpiece, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, tonight on 7. If you buy a Titan Garage Shed this month, you'll get two free automatic door openers. What a cracker deal and worth 660 bucks. Buy a double garage, double in a workshop or an Oz barn and get two free automatic door openers. Thanks, Titan. It's for this month only, so don't muck around. And remember, Titan can take care of your council requirements and deliver to your door. You'll be lucky you got a Titan. I'm lucky. Call 132736 for the Titan Display Centre near you. Lucky. Keithy Turnips up next. He flies. The ball's nowhere near him. Sucked in. Soap Dodger. Catch this. For NRL this Thursday and Friday, lead by four points or more at half time, and we'll pay you out straight away. Four up, you win with Sportsbet. Get up to 50% off everything during Bedshed Stock Take Sale. Plus, get an extra 10% off store wide this end of financial year weekend. So hurry in and save at Bedshed. No one's better in the bedroom. When the road calls, here's the very best way to answer the BMW X3 S Drive 20i from 69900 Drive Away. Joy is coming. When cold and flu symptoms strike, a kiss can make them feel better. But for effective relief through the night, there's Nurofen for children. Starts to reduce fever from 15 minutes and lasts for up to eight hours. Nurofen for children. Hi. Look at how great you look. Thank you. <laughs> I feel like I've been on a diet my entire life. I even cut out bread and pasta for a day. And then I tried Noom. I feel like anyone could use Noom. It's an easy to stick to program that actually changed my habits. It changed the way I look at food. They say it's based on a cognitive behavioral approach. I just say it works. It just clicked, it worked. It worked with Noom. Visit Noom.com and lose the weight for good. Why can I have a strong skin like that? Strong skin latte, please. Sorry, could you repeat that, please? Sir, did you say strong skin latte? Yeah, medium, please. Grab a hot medium McCafe coffee for $2 for a limited time on the My Maccas app. Far North Queensland is bracing itself for more wet weather after days of heavy rain. Hi. Hi. They've had 140 millimetres in the last 24 hours. After Townsville flooded, Barbara and the team were some of the first on the ground, lodging claims and getting people's lives back on track. That's the Suncorp spirit. 
England has been enjoying a summer heat wave, but as the hot weather swept in, out went all common sense. Thousands crammed onto beaches, ignoring social distancing rules, and there are fears that will lead to hundreds more cases of coronavirus. Hugh Whitfeld has more from London. In theory, the lockdown still exists here. In Britain, pubs and cafes are still closed, but it didn't stop people heading down to the beach on the south coast of England, flooding beaches in places like Brighton and Bournemouth. It did appear that it was very difficult to practice social distancing as the heat reached 33 degrees here in the UK. In Bournemouth, they declared a major incident to bring in extra resources to try and disperse the crowds from the beach. Oh, I think it's nice because we've been stuck in for so long. I just feel like it's something else to do. But there is a lot of people here. <laughs> Feels like Corona isn't really a thing now, but obviously it is. I'm enjoying it. Today is really nice weather, yeah? Sounds like, sounds like. It was a really hot day. I thought I'd take advantage of it. Coronavirus is still very real here in the UK. 149 people have died from coronavirus just in the last 24 hours. And England's chief medical officer has warned that if people don't practice social distancing, then cases will rise. Here in London, it does appear that there is a huge amount of lockdown fatigue. Police were called to break up what they've described as an unlicensed music event. What it really was was a street party that got completely out of hand. <laughs> Revellers in Brixton turned on police when they tried to break up the party. 22 police officers were injured, two required hospital treatment, just four people were arrested and police here in London are warning that they will have extra patrols out and about to monitor illegal events like that while the lockdown continues. The United States' COVID-19 situation could be much worse than reported. The Centre of Disease Control and Prevention says cases may be as high as 23 million, 10 times more than the official figures. The report comes as government inspectors discovered the US Treasury mistakenly sent more than $2 billion of its pandemic rescue funds to dead people. Since March, US Congress has pumped $3.8 trillion into its economy. A day after revealing pilot error played a role in a deadly crash in Pakistan, the airline involved has grounded dozens of pilots. Alarmingly, 150 of them may not hold a valid licence. The country's aviation minister claiming they could have cheated exams to obtain fake credentials. Pilots with other Pakistani airlines are also being accused of having fake licences. An investigation has was launched when one man claimed to have completed an exam on a public holiday. And a pilot in California has been pulled from the wreckage of his light plane without suffering injuries after it crashed while he was trying to land. The kit aircraft bounced on the runway at Cable Airport, became airborne again and then came down several metres away. The pilot was treated for some aches and pains. A fossil forgotten in an American museum has been identified as a new family of giant marsupial. The wombat-like creature lived in Australia about 250 million years ago. It's the cousin of our modern wombat, but would have been as much as four times bigger. It's thought the fossil was discovered in South Australia in the 1970s. We'll farewell our Gold Coast viewers now. You're off to the chase. Amanda Abate has your local news at 5.30. For the rest of Queensland, a cruise ship executive in the hot seat questioned at the inquiry into the Ruby Princess coronavirus outbreak. Ideas on how to entertain the kids these school holidays and why police are worried about safety on our roads. And the Eiffel Tower opens back up, but now it's a long way to the top. On 7 News, the Chinese spy scandal rocking Australian politics. Virgin's new owner, what it means for points and flights. No mortgage for a year. How to cash in on new home deals. Menus on your mobile, big changes to dining out. And the latest twist in the great buried cash mystery. 7 News at 6. They all wish they felt 10 years younger. Just need to get back to being the person that I was so proud to be once. There's no going back. OK. In just 10 days, their lives will be transformed for good. Oh, my God. The most heartwarming, life-changing show of the year. Oh, 
my... Ten years younger in ten days. Monday after Big Brother on 7. What? Oh, we've got to tell everyone. Hey, Gracie! Did you know some health insurers are run for profit? Oh, what? That's bonkers. <laughs> oh, what a quackish. Sure is. Join HBF today for six weeks free. The Snooze End of Financial Year sale is now on. Support your local business and save up to 50% off Australian-made mattresses. Plus, enjoy great savings on customisable Australian-made bedroom furniture. It's Hurry, sail in soon. What a little snooze can do. Anaconda's Super Stock Take Sale and Sunday. Ugly Stick Tackle Rats Kit Spin Combo. 30% off, now only $39.99. All fishing shirts, now half price. Head in store or shop online at anacondastores.com. Anaconda! If you're road tripping, RACQ has you covered. More Queenslanders trust us to insure their cars and come to their rescue with five levels of roadside assistance. Plus, members save on fuel and more. Get yourself road trip ready with RACQ. Accelerate your recovery with an end of financial year discount on the most popular Sunboost solar system. With a limited $400 end of financial year discount, fully installed for just $35.91. Only until Tuesday, June 30. So call 1300 Sunboost today. Discover stylish over 50s living at Ingenia Lifestyle Bethania. Come and see our range of brand new designs priced from only 299000 View our display village from the comfort of your own home with a virtual tour. Unlock the equity in your home and be part of a safe, secure and friendly community. And give yourself more time to do the things you love. Ingenia Lifestyle Bethania. Call us today. Live from Brisbane, 7 News with Kendall Gilding. Thanks for joining us. Making news this Friday. A major spy investigation involving a Labor politician has been launched by ASIO. The MP's Sydney home has been raided with federal officers seizing evidence to see if he's linked to the Chinese government. Virgin Airlines has a new owner and its headquarters will be in Brisbane. An American private equity group has become the operator after a rival with links to Richard Branson dropped out. And for the first time, Australia will host a major soccer tournament with the Women's World Cup coming to Australia and New Zealand in 2023. Brisbane will host some games. More people will be allowed inside smaller venues after National Cabinet agreed to further relax social distancing restrictions. The Prime Minister announced the four square, to square metre rule, which prevented a number of people inside smaller venues, has now been reduced to two square metres. Scott Morrison again called the state borders to reopen despite the outbreak in Melbourne. There will be outbreaks. What matters is the response. There will be outbreaks and what matters is that we continue to build our capability to deal with those outbreaks. Today's National Cabinet meeting also confirmed the 14-day quarantine period must be kept. A senior Carnival Australia executive has been grilled at the Ruby Princess inquiry over testing failures on board the cruise ship, while a grieving widow has told of her heartbreaking loss. Robert Avadia reports. Well, there have been quite a few fiery encounters right from the get-go since the Ruby Princess inquiry began, mostly from its irascible commissioner, Brett Walker SC. That certainly continued today in a line of questioning to a Carnival senior executive, a man by the name of Peter Little, who is in charge of guest experiences, a rather unfortunate title, given we know what happened to so many of the guests once they disembarked the Ruby Princess on March 19. He kept on pursuing the same line of questioning as vigorously as counsel assisting Richard Beasley. His main inquiry is the swabs, why there were so few swabs on board the Ruby Princess. It wasn't my, and is not my responsibility that, that area of the business. Whose responsibility was it it's at sit, the time? Yeah, it sits with the medical 
Public Services Department. Peter Little offered a statement to begin his testimony today, offering his sympathies to everybody who has been so adversely affected by this tragedy, none more so than the person who was in the witness box before him. Jeanette Moore's husband, Bob, died from COVID-19 after disembarking the Ruby Princess on March 19. She said he had little more than a sniffle the day after and that it was actually their local GP who insisted they get tested. Our doctors got together and he rang straight back within five minutes and said, cool. Get an ambulance. Yes, OK, you've said that in Paris. Yep. So, yep. Mrs Moore also testified that she did not hear herself of any advertising from Carnival on board about free health checkups. School is out for Queensland students. They'll have a two-week break from the classroom starting from this afternoon. Now the work begins for parents finding ways to entertain the kids with some ideas on how to keep the little ones busy. We're joined by mum of three and writer for Brisbane Kids magazine, Kath Johnson. Kath, thanks for joining us. What are some ideas to keep them occupied these school holidays? Well, Kendall, the good news is that many attractions right across Queensland are reopening just in time for the school holidays, including some of our favourites like the museums and zoos. But it is a good idea to uh, check their websites first in case you need to make a booking. But it really is a great time to be first in our own town or even to take a road trip into some of our regional communities and support them. I know the Granite Belt region is expecting a sprinkling of snow this winter. And there's even a Christmas tree farm there that would be fun to take the kids to. Getting kids away from screens can always be a bit of a battle. What are your tips to get them outside? Yeah, it can be a battle, can't it? But the weather at the moment is so glorious that it's just perfect for getting outside for some picnics or bike rides or bushwalks. I know our family, we love to go strawberry picking during the winter months, but some families might like to set a challenge like climbing a mountain together or for younger kids doing a scavenger hunt in nature. <laughs> Um, you know, for those that really can't part with their screens, Jericho is a really compromise because it gets the kids outside but still involves a bit of screen action as well. And Kath, you say we shouldn't feel the need to fill our kids' schedules, that being bored can be a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. I know for my own kids that they're often the most creative after they've had some time to be bored. So as tempting as to overschedule our school holidays, book in lots of activities. I think it's just important, just as important to schedule in some quiet time at home and some downtime. And if you're looking for activities at home, a fun one is a time capsule, especially at the moment, given world events, it's quite an interesting time to mark in our children's lives. And I can guarantee it'll keep them busy for a little while too. All right, Kath Johnson, thank you so much for joining us and uh, good luck to all the parents out there. <laughs> And police are warning drivers there'll be extra patrols on our roads these school holidays. This year, more Queenslanders are likely to go on driving holidays within the state with the borders closed. Police are pleading with us to obey the road rules. Last year, 28,000 drivers were caught speeding during the school break. This time last year, we had uh, 14 people were killed over the same two week period and uh, tragically over 800 injury crashes. The high visibility road campaign runs from midnight tonight until Friday the 17th of July. Let's get a check of finance with Stephen Dagley and at Comsec. Steve, how did the share market finish the week? A uh, very good afternoon to you, Kendall. Well, look, unfortunately, we couldn't make it uh, a positive week overall, but at least it was a, a pretty good uh, day today. Shares up about 1.5%. Uh, the problem was that the market fell by 2.5% just yesterday. But the good news is we've only got two trading days left now in June and also this financial year. And at the moment, we look set to improve for three straight months. Uh, fingers crossed that's the case. But uh, today, of course, the COVID-19 situation still keeping the market somewhat on edge and is a reason maybe why we didn't recoup yesterday's uh, losses. Uh, we had gains from the big banks, gains from AMP and the other investment managers. That helped to support the market today, as did some of the big miners as well, like BHP. The main weight on the market, one of the worst, was Qantas, which was down about 9%. Not surprising, considering that investors had a lot to digest from the group. Plenty was announced from Qantas in the past 24 hours, including raising quite a bit of money and also cutting jobs as well. The Aussie dollar finally sitting at about 68.8 US cents. Kendall. Stephen Dagley, and thanks so much. Have a great weekend.
For the first time in three months, the Eiffel Tower in Paris is open for tourists and locals. Hundreds lined up to get into the famous landmark, which had been closed from the outset of the coronavirus pandemic. But it isn't completely back to normal. The highest point is still shut off and its elevators are closed, meaning the only way up is the stairs. Sports coming up next, including the latest from Red Hill before the Broncos clash with the Titans. Also, the end of an era as regional newspapers print their final editions before transitioning online. And volunteers needed for the cutest job in the country. Four hundred and eighty-eight thousand buried in a suburban backyard. The most bizarre money pit discovery and how this squatter holds all the cards in the race to claim it. The new twist, who owns the buried half a million dollars on 7 News, 6 o'clock. It's just very lonely out here and I'm looking for someone to share these flies with. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. Never expected to have feelings for someone so quickly. My heart has pounded faster and harder than it ever has in my life. Yeah, I'm in a bloody pickle, mate. New farmer Harry finds the love of his life. She might be the one. New farmer wants a wife. This July on 7. Hey, RD Garage Doors are a member of the Titan Group, a trusted brand for quality and service. Our doors are made strong, come with the latest designs and colours, include tamper-resistant locks and can be automated. We'll come to you. Call 132169 or ARDDoors.com.au. Why can I have a strong skin luck? Strong skin latte, please. Sorry, could you repeat that, please? Did you say strong skin latte? Yeah, medium, please. Grab a hot medium McCafe coffee for $2 for a limited time on the My Macca's app. I thought my teeth were clean, but my dentist said no, they're still plaque. Switch your brush from this to one with a rounded brush head. Oral-B is rounded to reach between teeth and gums, gently removing plaque for healthier gums. Oral-B, brush like a pro. Today, Brad's approved a shiny new car and more than a few new bumpers. Harry is all approved. Oh, that's great news. Anita's is approved Harry's vet bills. And Rani's approved, well, everything for this soggy situation. With RACQ, you can trust us to be there when it matters most. You know you're covered with RACQ insurance. Buy online and save. Last minute needs for your pet? No problem. Get it to your door today with Pet Barn's same day delivery. And with a price match promise, there's everything you need and more at Pet Barn. This is Fran. Fran delivers food to those in need. With inspiring people like Fran, Origin volunteered over 9,000 working hours supporting community partners last year. Origin, powered by good energy. Thanks for calling ING. It is Adam speaking. How can I help you? Uh, no, I'm currently working from home. Oh, you can call any time, so... Uh... Sorry! <laughs> and she's currently nibbling at my toe right now. Yeah, working from home was a bit tricky at first, but... There's definitely been some straight farts, um, hasn't there, mate? And now your loan's on a fixed rate. Can I help you with anything else? No, uh, you've made my day. Well, whatever 2020 throws at you, we're here for a chat any time. Too easy. Classic cottage pie, spicy lamb stew, gooey pear crumble. The best winter dinners on Better Homes, tonight. The page will turn on a new chapter tomorrow when the last editions of dozens of regional newspapers are printed. Many in Queensland are moving online or are being closed. Emily Arnold has more. Good afternoon, Kendall. Well, this really is the end of an era for print journalism in so many regional areas across the state. After tomorrow, there'll no longer be any daily papers between Townsville and Brisbane, most going online. Sure, the journalist staff are going to be around and they're still going to be local stories, but uh, the actual archiving of our history and the representation of our community in a print form 
uh, stops today and that's very, very sad. Not only are the cuts costing dozens of jobs, it's extremely disappointing for many avid readers, including Rockhampton couple Lyle and Gladys Shorey. They've bought a paper daily since they were married more than seven decades ago and don't own a phone or computer. Very disappointing, won't it? Mm. We'll have to find some way of, of getting their news. And Kendall, while there is much disappointment, some people are embracing the change. Tonight at six, I'll introduce you to a 110-year-old who's become the country's oldest digital news subscriber. Well, let's get a quick look at the, the day's sport now with Pat. Kendall, thank you. Hello, everyone. Matilda's players say they are thrilled with this morning's announcement that Australia and New Zealand will co-host the Women's World Cup in 2023. The event will be a huge boost for the sport from grassroots through to the elite level and will bring global attention for our Aussie team. For us, we play our best football in front of our fans. Um, I think that gives us obviously an advantage and, um, yeah, it just makes, it makes us so excited. The tournament will be held across 12 cities in Australia and New Zealand with the final to be played in Sydney. Davida Pangai Jr. says Anthony Seabold's such a good coach that he re-signed with Brisbane to continue learning from the under siege mentor. Ahead of tomorrow's M1 derby, reports stated Seabold had lost the support of the playing group, but Pangai says the team's right behind their coach. Definitely, um, you know, he's one of the big reasons why I re-signed him. Um, so I don't think he's, I don't, I don't know, that's news to me. Overnight, Penrith grabbed the ladder lead, beating the Bunnies 20 to 12. Nathan Cleary was outstanding, despite spending Wednesday on a drip in hospital fighting a facial infection. Jeff Horn says he's hurt and shocked after seven years revealed his ex-trainer Dundee Kim had defected to bitter rival Tim Zhu. The former world champion feels let down by Kim, who helped train him for six years, but is now in the Zhu camp imitating Horn. Jeff says Kim's shock switch will give Tim a genuine advantage. It looked like he was trying to show what my moves are, and I guess over six years and then to be doing that to my next opponent, it's pretty, pretty hard to see. That's a very low act, honestly. I do, I, it's not what friends do. The fists will do the talking in the first week of September. The celebrations have erupted around the football world for Liverpool fans after they broke a 30-year title drought and claimed their first ever Premier League tra championship. Liverpool was crowned champions after Chelsea beat Man City 2-1 early this morning. Well, unfortunately, I have no words. It's unbelievable. It's much more than I ever thought what would be possible. Man City needed to beat Chelsea to stop Liverpool from claiming the title. I'll have lots more on all those stories and a bit more tonight at six. See you then. Thanks, Pat. Well, if you have a bit of extra time and love to give, this next job may be for you. Smart Pups Assistance Dogs is in urgent need of puppy carers. The volunteers will provide the pups with basic training and socialisation. Best of all, you get paid in cuddles. The dogs will eventually be placed with children with special needs. The forecast for the first weekend of the school holidays is coming up next with Paul Burt, plus celebrating a special milestone for twin panda cubs and why this fast-talking four-year-old is going viral. On 7 News, the Chinese spy scandal rocking Australian politics. Virgin's new owner, what it means for points and flights. No mortgage for a year. How to cash in on new home deals. Menus on your mobile, big changes to dining out and the latest twist in the great buried cash mystery. 7 News at 6. Good afternoon, Dave Andrews here in the Your Town Traffic Chopper as we head towards the weekend. We've got some busy going on the gateway this afternoon, pretty much from Nudgee all the way through towards the Bruce Highway and the Pine River Bridge. Bit of traffic too, pushing through the Petrie Roundabout, the run on the Pacific Motorway outbound slow through Green Slopes and up over the Pine River Bridge, quite stop start as well. There's been a 40% increase in demand for Kids Helpline. One young person calls every 60 seconds. Help answer the call. Donate now at kidshelpline.com.au. Have yourself a great weekend. More traffic coming up Monday. Sworn enemies will meet, but behind their smiles, 
Cheers, guys. They're plotting to take her down for good. This is their life. There's something going on. It's time to get rid of her. She's getting ready for the ultimate double cross. It's like the Last Supper. But whose Last Supper will it be? Angela's exactly where we want to be. Everyone in this room's a threat. Bon appetit. Can she survive TV's biggest week? If you're going to shoot your shot, make sure you hit. Yeah, it's game on. Ooh la la. Big Brother's Last Supper, Sunday at 7 on 7. At Domain, we want to help you make it yours with our amazing range of customizable Australian made furniture and bedding. Choose from a range of sizes, fabrics, colours, timber stains, and more to create your perfect piece. Make it bold, make it fit, make it yours with our expertise to guide you every step of the way. So come in store and start customising. We're ready. Take advantage of 60 months interest free, available now, and make it yours at Domain. Macca's new Cheesy Burgers are your favourites, only cheesier. A golden mozzarella patty with 100% Aussie beef or chicken. And mozzarella sticks are back. Macca's new Cheesy range, only for a limited time. Uh, about two, three weeks into Noom, I saw a commercial on TV. I go, Noom should have me on the commercial because I eat candy and ice cream all day. Noom is made for the real world. I'm a third generation uh, candy maker. It's so sustainable and I don't have to deprive myself. It corrected all of the bad habits that I had fallen into. From a both physical and mental standpoint, he's just healthier. I taste candy every day for a living, and if I can lose weight on Noom, so can you. Visit Noom.com and change your life for good. The world's most exotic fragrances are made by nature. That's why we've created Botanica fragrances infused with natural ingredients that are responsibly sourced. Botanica by Airwick. It's Tax Time Madness at JB with prices smashed. Like a staggering 400 off the Samsung Note 10 Plus. The Samsung Galaxy S20 crunched to 11.49. And this is nuts. 300 bucks on the Samsung Galaxy Active to watch. Extended opening hours until June 30. JB, you've done it again. Your Ford dealer is open and ready to help your business get back to business with high vis value. So you can get the special edition Ranger FX4 for only $57,990 drive away. Or the special edition Ranger Sport for just $49,490 drive away. And don't forget to check if your business is eligible for the government's instant asset write-off this financial year. So hurry into your Ford dealer now for high biz value. Four seconds. Four seconds. Wow. It'll come down. Four seconds. To four seconds. Wow. There's only one word for this ending. Wow. 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 New The Chase, weekdays at 5 on 7. This weather report proudly brought to you by Australian Red Cross. Good afternoon, Queensland. You are watching 7 News as we come to you live from the beautiful foreshores again of the Narang River. Have a look at that for a magnificent backdrop. Some beautiful golden colours there as that sun sets in the Western Ranges. That's surface paradise, by the way. Yeah, very quiet at the moment. Obviously, it's quite cool outside and a lot of people trying to keep warm. Let's have a look at that satellite picture. It is showing that large high pressure system moving over Victoria. That's going to bring some stable clear conditions for most of the southern majors, but also allowing a lot of cooler weather to settle on in. We do have that low deep in the Tasman at the moment. That's directing up a new swell, which will reach our beaches tonight into tomorrow. So good news there for the surfers. Over to the west tomorrow, we are going to see another cold front pushing through the southern parts of Perth into the southern bite. And of course, that'll impact the southern majors over the coming day. So more cold weather on the way and that is to be expected we are in winter so we take a look around the nation now clear for canberra 1 to 12 degrees 5 to 13 and clear also for melbourne 11 to 17 and partly cloudy for sydney partly cloudy also for hobart 4 to 13 tropics it'll be like that tomorrow with a top of 26 degrees in Cairns, 17 tonight 12 to 23 for mackay further south uh, the only chance of any showers might be at harvey bay 12 to 22 otherwise fairly clear Minus 1 to 20 for Roma. Back home, pretty good conditions early, and then some possible showers coastal regions later in the afternoon. Uh, those southeasterly trades will increase throughout the day. Tops of around 22 degrees for the Gold Coast and Bayside, 11 to 22 in the city. And Kendall, I'll be back at 6 with your full weekend weather wrap. Looking forward to it. See you then. Thanks, Bertie.
Well, Max joins me now for a look at tonight's news. And Max, there's never been more cash incentives to buy your first home. Kendall, and it's not just the government offering them up. If someone offered to pay your mortgage for a year, you'd probably ask, what's the catch? But one Brisbane developer says there's none. He's offering to buy th this deal to new buyers who miss out on those government grants that are about tonight. We'll tell you where to sign up. Also tonight, contactless dining is becoming the new norm in the hospitality industry. It's good that we're allowed out again, but there are some changes, aren't they? With many Brisbane bars and restaurants turning to technology, customers can get a beer and a burger without having to leave their seat. We'll have that story soon. Sounds like a good idea. And we have an update on that mysterious buried cash. Fascinating, intriguing stuff, isn't it? Yes, there's been a judge ruling in Queensland's Supreme Court today that's set to shape the battle over who is the rightful owner of nearly half a million dollars. Don't miss that story and the rest of the day's breaking news coming up at six. Thanks, Max. We'll see you then. Twin giant panda cubs have celebrated 100 days since they were born at a research base in southwest China. The pair, who were named in support of Wuhan during the coronavirus outbreak, feasted on rice dumplings to mark the occasion. They're definitely big eaters. They weighed 100 grams at birth but are now five kilos each. To social media now, a four-year-old girl is going viral for her sassy remarks while doing her own makeup tutorial. I know y'all thinking, why would you do that, girl? She had the audacity to growl at me. Can you believe it? You might be thinking, a four-year-old doesn't need makeup, but the tongue-in-cheek video is gaining plenty of laughs. Beyonce is set to receive an award not for her music, but her philanthropy. The singer will be honoured with a humanitarian award at the 2020 BET Awards this weekend. It's for her initiatives supporting women through college and bringing clean drinking water to parts of East Africa. And the Muppets will be back on our TV screens in a new series called Muppets Now. Streaming service Disney shared the trailer featuring Kermit, Miss Piggy and the rest of the gang. It's going to be wild and funny. And it's going to feature some new friends. Friends like... No details about celebrity guests. It airs next month. And to stay connected over the weekend, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. That's our 4pm news for another week. I'm Kendall Gilding. Thanks for your company. The Chase is next. Then be sure to catch 7 News at 6 with Max and Sharon. Have a great weekend. It says he... I saw